Good morning. I'm Lynn. Ugh, bad hair day. It's windy again. Welcome to Utopia Farms, where every day is the same, and yet every day has a little bit of excitement, hopefully, <laughs> that uh, keeps it entertaining. Maybe. Anyway, let's go inside and see what's happening in there today. Okay, so I was just checking my records on this girl, and I'm extremely confused because my records showed that she had a single ram lamb on September 9th. That would explain the green mark on her back there, and that's why I thought she lost a lamb. However, she was left in the barn. So if she was bred in October, like got rebred right away, October, November, December, January, February, it is possible that she immediately rebred because I don't have her marked down as being in with a ram because she was supposed to have lambs with her other lamb was sired by Gaston, and then we didn't use Gaston in this group. But she would have stayed left over and went when the fall lambs had their babies. Yeah, when the fall lambs had their babies, she would have just been left in the group if she lost a lamb. And because we had Fargo in there as kind of like a cleanup on everyone. And I'm guessing these lambs are from Fargo. But I've never had this happen before. So I'm going to go uh, check my uh, records that are in the house because they're not in here because that was a while ago. And see if she did have a lamb that died. But... That would explain why she had the green mark on her back. But that would be highly unusual for a ewe to go through a pregnancy, lose a lamb, and immediately get bred again. But from all my records, and I'm pretty good with my records, that's what it looks like happened. That's crazy. So this morning we've got another lamb here. Hi, baby. This one was dry when Arnie found it, so we, we're assuming that she's finished lambing because she has no placenta, but because we weren't there and the lamb hadn't nursed, um, we're a little nervous, so we're just going to give it an enema to make sure it has a poop. It has a nurse and both teats are plugged. So, yeah, if both teats are plugged, it means she, the lamb hadn't nursed yet. And we find that lambs that don't get their colostrum quickly are the ones that are most likely to get a little constipated or have a hard time pushing out that first poop. And it's just water we use, so if, uh, if it did have a poop, there's no harm done. But if you don't get that first meconium poop out, it can actually cause hypothermia even in hot conditions, so. And you just stick the little, uh, little think it's not easy. Right. You just stick the little string very gently into the anus and squirt hot water in, and that's it. And usually. Oh, see. Oh, see, see it coming out there? And and now it's lubricated. If you pull on that, it'll actually come out. Arnie, Arnie doesn't like to do that, but I always pull it out. I'm not gonna play around with it. Here, you hold it, and I'll show you how it how it comes no, out. No, it's gonna come out. Watch on. Oh, here it comes. He's doing a good job. There you go. Oh, there oh, you go. Oh, see how much is in there? And it's like tar. It's black, and uh, it can if it if it doesn't come out fairly quickly after birth, it really can plug them up and they can't di they can't move what they've digested and they become hypothermic. So he's dry, so I'm thinking he's a couple hours old. 
and he wasn't nursing, so that means that he didn't get the milk to do the poo. Didn't I just say that? Already? That's right. I well, swear I'm just, I did. I'm just saying we wouldn't have done it. Yeah. If 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 he was nursing. That's right. But but uh, unless he, if, if you've got a lamb that's hunched up and starting to get cold, the first thing you should do is give it an enema. There's lots of milk. Because as soon as you do that, if poop comes out. You don't need the warming boxes and all that. You just put a towel on them. They'll warm up on their own. No, I just He'll figure it out. But we'll, we're going to read her, see who she is. And because she had a lamb while we weren't here. Oh, there's some more. Yep, more came out. Oh, more. It's, it's an amazingly large amount. And when you have a lamb that is covered in yellow or brown when it's born in the sack. That's a sign of a bad birth because the lamb has actually passed that, that poop in the sack from the pressures of lambing being squeezed and struggling in there trying to get out. And that's why they're covered in yellow. Those ones that are yellow, you don't have to watch for those poops because they've already pooped. He's quit crying. Hi, sweetheart. Is it a boy or a girl? Girl, I think. Another girl? Yeah, another All girls. Another investment, man, to keep us going. You're standing in front of the camera now. But the YouTube uh, followers should be happy about that, because the more females we get, we probably just can't give it up, and the channel will keep on going, and uh, people will be happy. Real happy, honey. And maybe, uh, maybe the YouTube channelers can send me a little bone and give me a little treat or something. Oh, actually, my finger was in the camera. Actually, we had one viewer who seems to be a big fan of you. Why? I don't know why. Why would anybody be a fan of you? That would be my question. I just can't figure that but out. anyway, he he wanted to know what type of pizza you liked. What kind of what? Pizza you liked because oh. he knew he was going to order you one through Milano's. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know I said, don't do that. I said, that's totally uncalled but, for. But it's funny you say that. You know what, Joe? You, you agree with me. If you, ha if you, have, if you have alcohol, like, like, a, like a crown royal, why would you ruin it with apple flavoring? Right. So when you have a pizza, what's the, what's the main thing about the pizza? The crust, the sauce, and the cheese. And don't overkill it. Yeah, the, well, the question was, do you like it all dressed? Because you being big and always mowing down food, he assumed that you would want it all dressed. And I said, no, he actually doesn't. He do, He's keep not a, much of a meat eater. Keep it simple. And now I have a story on this youth who had the lambs last night. I did check her records. Cause when I checked to see who the dad was, I couldn't find her on the breeding list, so I thought that's weird. And then I found her with that Gaston had bred her September 9th. And I thought, okay, that's really weird. I made a mistake. So I went to the house, pulled out my record books, and sure enough, she did lamb on September 9th. She had, on my notes, it said she had a really nice, large male lamb, and we were really happy about it. And I guess he had a bleeding umbilical cord and we had tied it off, but I guess we didn't get it quickly enough and he actually died. So those of you who have been with us since last fall probably will remember that happening when we lost a lamb with the bleeding umbilical cord. I hadn't remembered it till I read it. And that's why she had a green marking on her back because I figured... You know, we don't put markings like that unless there's a story with her. Something happened. She lost a lamb. But then I'm thinking in September, how could she have lambed again? Because for, she would have had to have bred back within 30 days of her losing the lamb. But you got to remember, she delivered a full-term lamb, a big lamb. She had a full udder. She had to pl pass a placenta and clean up and shrink down and then ovulate and produce more eggs to get fertilized by the cleanup ram Fargo, who will be the dad of these lambs. But it's really quite miraculous. Like, people use cedars and try to 
get used to breed back really quickly, but that's extremely quickly. Like, we didn't use any drugs on her, and we left her in that group thinking, you know, we, we were full up in the barns at that time. We thought, no harm done, just leave her in there with the others, and she'll be fine. And, you know, it would have been good luck if she bred back, but we would never have expected her to breed back that quickly. So her first lamb that she lost was her first lamb, and she followed up immediately afterwards with these two really, really nice lambs here that she has. So she's like a little mir miracle you, I would say. We'll go record this lammy now. You're, you've got a very nice lammy. So here's a little lamb. It's the 196th ewe lamb, or you to have a lamb this year. Now that doesn't count anyone who lost a lamb because um, some of the ones that lost a lamb, like at birth, I wouldn't have marked them. But she's the 196th with live lambs. And... I just checked who Daddy was. Daddy is Quincy, so Quincy's group is now officially all finished. There's none left in his group. He bred them all, so we're glad about that. All our other breeding groups have a couple of ewes left to be bred or to have lambs. So he was the first snappy uh, is the next closest in line. He has one more of you that's due to have a lamb. Sweetie, don't paw at your lamb. Do you think she likes that? And this is her fourth lamb. In the heifer barn now, and we can see this girl's going to lamb very soon because she's got a really nicely formed udder there it's tied up to her body it's really wide it's a good height it's not dangling you don't like to see those udders down by their knees or even lower um, she has really nice attachment on her udder so it will be easy for the lamb to nurse and it will add to her longevity because ewes with those bad udders don't live very long because they get called out because their udders, if they're dangling down, um, they're not, they tend not to work properly and they get put on the call list. But when you do that often enough, um, it quickly corrects the udder issues in your barn. So um, select for those used with good udders and their daughters will have good udders and it just goes along to making your whole life easier. Now, you just walked up, and you look very, very large. Hi, are you going to have a baby soon? You just look like you're going to. Oh, honey. You need some TLC right now? Yeah. It's not fun being pregnant, is it? No, but it's nice to have a lammy, isn't it? Oh, you're a sweetheart. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So we can see how nice you are. Yeah, you're really nice. Can you see you? That's you. You got a piece of debris on your nose. There. That looks better. You're such a good girl. <laughs> You're liking that. I'm rubbing her on her chest right now. That's the favorite spot of most most sheep, most animals in uh, in general, like dogs. If you want to calm a dog down, pet them there too. Hi, you big baby. And you're gonna have big babies. I can tell, you're pretty large. Here comes another large girl. Hi, you've got one dot. And who was one dot? No dot was Geronimo. One dot, I think 
Mike might be snappy. Hi, you look like you were pregnant too. And, and you're just not going to leave, are you? It's hard to get work done when they do this. You're, you're too demanding. This is putting stress on the day. Because we can't get our work done. I have to go back to selfie mode because she is pretty well running me over. You're wanting attention badly. Yeah, you are. Do you have a tattoo? No, don't look in the camera. Now you're way ahead of me. Now you're way ahead. That's you. Aren't you beautiful? Can I see if you have a tattoo? You do have a tattoo. You do. Yeah, we'll continue your lines. Because you're beautiful. So this is a uh, really nice looking youth. What we're looking for in our... <laughs> I think she can see herself. But she got the nice long bell ears, really nice Suffolk face, really good disposition. Shall we go look and see how your other's doing? We'll go check, okay? Okay, here she is. Now she's just gonna wanna fall. I wanna look at your other, okay? We're gonna see how close you are. It's hard to film you when you're in my face. You can see big belly. Ah, oh, I don't see too much under there. Really, really small udder. She's far away. Honey, you're going to be one of those me lammers. And hopefully that's not triplets because you're pretty large for no udder. But it's funny, some, some ewes will develop their udder quite well in advance, like the one we were looking at over here. She's had an udder for quite a while. That's why when Arnie said we had a lamb this morning, I thought it was going to be hers. And others, like Cammie, was like this girl. And I thought she'd be really late. But she, when she came close, she formed an udder very quickly. So you can't always go by udders. If they have an udder, you know that they're close. But if they have a very, very small one, it usually means farther away, but not always. Okay, it's time to feed these little monsters. Yous just got fed, so we got lamb races going on in the young pen. Okay, these guys are hungry. Let's get feeding these guys. When I feed these guys, you may notice that there's absolutely no pigeons or birds in this barn today. And that's because our falcon is here. Falcons eat birds. Hawks eat rodents. And we got a falcon here, Arnie. Arnie! The falcon's here. There's no birds in the barn. Yeah. He just flew. But that's why um, that's why there's no birds in here. It's just whenever you come in and there's no birds, you know there's an owl or a falcon in the barn. Could actually be a sharp shinned hawk. I believe they eat birds too. I gave these guys their bottle, but the big guy here, last night he basically only took a few sips, and this morning he only took half a bottle. And the same I'm noticing with Luther. These big guys, they, they kind of wean themselves because now they're eating creep feed and hay and stuff and they're full so when i bring a bottle over they 
don't want anymore. And uh, that's that's how I like it. They, they kind of win themselves. It's less stress. And uh, shortly these guys will all be off bottles as well because they're well on their way. Especially that triplet ram there. He's a big boy. I've been going into the young lamb pen every day just to see if there's anyone who needs topping up and there there are a few that will come and take a little bit of milk some of the finer ones and this guy he comes up to me every day and just stands beside me this is one of the troublesome white ones from the other pen who used to be the hooligan over there with the bottle babies so I understand why he's jumping all over me and his brother because they were the rowdy crew. But this little suffix that I was trying to tell you about, not you, this one over here who's behind me now, he comes up every day and is not one that takes a bottle. He's looking at them now. But look at, he's one of those rams that you can touch all over. He just comes and hangs around with me because he wants to be pet. And he just follows me around with this innocent look on his face and it's always a boy. Always a boy. Why couldn't you be a girl? Why? It's always a boy. Look at the face. But most sheep don't let you do this. It's the rare one that just for some reason takes a shining to you, comes up, and you can basically totally molest them because <laughs> they like to be touched. Who are you, buddy? We don't know why you're like this. We could understand it if you wanted a bottle, but you don't. You don't want a bottle. You just want loving. Yeah. Is that a good massage, honey? Yeah, I think you like the massages. Oh, you are a funny thing. You two are not here for love, and you two are here to climb, molest, just be troublemakers. That's all you guys are. Trouble makers. You were the ratty crew over there. That's why we brought you over here. Because you were like kind of in control in the main barn. Weren't you? The troublesome twosome. Look at them. I didn't, Ernie. I turned it off selfie mode. It's not all about you. Honey. Talking to sheep, is that kind of like a senior thing, senior moment? Not really. I get more feedback than I get from talking to humans. Well, one, in, one, in, one in particular. You get, you get treated a lot better with me, honey, if you, if you acknowledge me a little bit. Really? really? Really, Arnie? Who gets more acknowledgement than you? But But nobody likes those ones that demand acknowledgement. He's a nice ram too, that, that guy right there. The he's, big, got, he's got white eyebrows. He's very pretty. But this one is, is strange. This is the friendly one. He's so sweet. How did you get to be like that, buddy? Oh my goodness. Where's your mom? Where's your mom? Well, I brought two bottles over and uh, the only uh, one taking them is Katie. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. Why are you so friendly?
Here another troublesome one. All is the males. Ow! Don't pull my hair. Are you pulling my hair? You were. You think I couldn't feel that? Yeah, I think I could. Huh. Looney! Looney's actually quite friendly too. Bring her over. Hi, Looney. She, she was over here for petting earlier anyway. She's friendly. Ben, get out. Get out. Hey, ben. Tony, just relax. I'll put you on the ground. It's Looney. Yeah, it's ben. Yeah. You don't have to take off like a rocket. Watch yeah, Ben. Tony. It's Looney. <laughs> they don't like to be manhandled except this guy. He wants to be manhandled. Well, that's it for another day. I hope you enjoyed your time at Utopia Farms. And if you did, give us a like, give us a comment, whatever. Let us know that you enjoyed it here. And I hope you'll join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.